NASA has been planning for yonks to, to develop a new spacesuit design, and they never quite get enough money to do it. The current generation of NASA spacesuits debuted in the 1980s before I was born. Something that I'm really interested in seeing is the new SpaceX spacesuits. Actually, while I was editing this video, I found out that NASA suspended ISS spacewalks because their spacesuits are leaking water. The most recent incident happened in March when water began to pool inside an astronaut's helmet. So yeah, it's time for an upgrade. Those spacesuits are now more than 40 years old and there are only 18 usable units available on the ISS. And that's why SpaceX is currently in the process of designing new spacesuits to protect astronauts on spacewalks. Jared Isaacman and his crew will be the first to test out these new suits on an excursion outside the Dragon spacecraft. Unfortunately, the design and the appearance of the new spacesuits have not yet been revealed by SpaceX but we know the suit will definitely be an upgrade. Right now, the custom fitted pressure garments worn by astronauts during launch and re-entry inside of Dragon would not pressurize to keep the crew alive in the event of an emergency. So these suits will keep them much more safe. We can also expect to see changes in the materials of the new suit. Jared Eisenman says that the upgraded suit will better shield astronauts from micrometeoroids and orbital debris. That's like tiny space rocks or space junk fragments that could strike a crew member while they're outside the spacecraft on a spacewalk. And I gotta just pause for a moment to tell you about why I was thinking about what it would be like to be on a spacewalk recently. As many of you know, I like to climb outside and while it is thrilling and exhilarating, it's also quite scary. And when you're leading a route outside, you have to clip the rope up the rock face as you go along. I got to a certain spot where I had climbed over a roof and then the last clip that I had to make was to the anchors, the end of the route, but they were at least 15 feet away with me and I had to slightly traverse to get there. So I'm not gonna lie, I think I shed a tear as I finally made that clip because you're 110 feet off the ground, it feels super exposed it's starting to get windy at that point. So it just made me think, wow, if this is scary to me and certainly pretty protected, how crazy would it be to be on a spacewalk? I also recently watched The Martian. I know, I can't believe it took me that long to finally watch it, but it was so good. But it just really made me think, what would it be like to actually be on a spacewalk. It has me really excited. I have had some of you in the comments say that, you know, Ellie in space should truly be a journalist in space someday. And I don't know, I think it's a great idea, but definitely tell me in the comments, do you think that you would just be excited and kind of mesmerized, immersed in the moment? Or do you think that going on a spacewalk actually sounds pretty scary? Um, yeah, let me know in the comments. Now the new suit will look more like SpaceX's in-cabin pressure suits than NASA's older bulky spacesuits used for excursions outside the ISS. Jared Isaacman was quoted saying, you're adding lots of redundancies in the suit that don't exist today since it's more last line of defense. He was referring to differences between SpaceX's current suit and the new EV spacesuit. He says, quote, you have a new visor, new seals, then mobility, joints everywhere for increased mobility and dexterity in the fingers and such. I think visually it will be more along the lines of what it currently looks like, but very much like a new suit. So it's all in the details, right? It might not look that different according to Isaac Men, but it will definitely keep astronauts much more safe. Isaacman said the crew will wear the new suit during launch and re-entry because there's simply not enough room inside the capsule to carry the suit and change into it once in space. Two of the Polaris Dawn crew members will actually head outside for the spacewalk 
also known as an EVA or extravehicular activity. And this really got me. SpaceX's new spacesuit will be the first US design capable of a spacewalk since the early space shuttle era. Again, the current generation of NASA suits debuted in the 1980s. NASA is in the final stages of selecting a company to develop and provide spacesuits for the agency's Artemis missions to the moon. So SpaceX's new suit may be a candidate for that contract. Polaris Dawn crew members are preparing for that spacewalk, the first EVA to be performed by non-government astronauts or cosmonauts. Some of that training will include practice runs underwater and allowing the crew to get a feel for how the suit will handle without the pull of gravity. And while I was talking to Jonathan McDowell recently about the picture of our black hole in our Milky Way galaxy, I also asked him what he thought of and wanted to see with the new spacesuit. So here is some of that conversation. Do you have any like interest in the new spacesuits that are being developed by SpaceX? Well, I think it's an important evolution, right? Uh, so yeah, SpaceX is what's critical about what I assume you're talking about is the EVA spacesuits, the spacewalking spacesuits. Yes, yes. And that, so that's like a real spacesuit, not yeah. just a crappy pressure suit that's there in yeah. case your cabin springs a leak, right? This is something, an EVA spacesuit, an extravehicular activity spacesuit is really a self-contained spaceship, right? It's a spaceship space shaped like a human. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, and so that's a whole other level. Right. Uh, and it's critical if you want to go outside your spaceship for a spacewalk like they're doing, or if you want to go and walk on the moon, for example. Mm -hmm. So it's an important new capability for SpaceX that they haven't had before. Right. Right. Uh, and so you need in addition. So the pressure suit that they've worn up to now, uh, you know, it has the helmet. It has an oxygen supply, but it's not independent of the cabin oxygen supply. You've got, you know, a, a hose going into you, and it's it's um, it doesn't have its own electrical power. It, uh, I don't think it even has a cooling system. It's it's your so you need you know it will keep you alive if the cabin springs a leak. Uh, on re-entry or something like that, right? Uh, that's why they wear them when they're going up and going down. That's the most likely time that you might have some sort of catastrophic failure. Uh, and so if the air rushes out of the spacecraft, you still got some air to breathe. But, but you're still dependent for anything longer than a few minutes, you're still dependent on the spaceship's own AC and air supply and, and electrical power and things like that. Mm -hmm. So with a spacewalking spacesuit, you have a backpack that contains all of that stuff, mm -hmm. right? It has its own electricity supply, its batteries, it has its own air supply, and you have uh, a special uh, underwear with um, tubes of water running through them to keep you cool so you don't overheat when you're exposed directly to the sun. Uh, and you have, you know, a radio system to communicate back to the spacecraft. All of these, you have basically everything that an actual spaceship does, mm -hmm. right? All, all put in a backpack and with, the, with this suit attached to it. And then the other thing they got to do, right, is be prepared to have all of the air go out of the dragon when they open the, the, the front part and go outside. And then they come back in and they have to have enough spare air to fill the dragon with air again so they can take the spacesuits off. And you've got to make sure that you can open and close this hatch in space. And when you close it, it's really closed and sealed. And that's not trivial either, right? Because it it's one thing to make the hatch seal nice on Earth when you're, you know, in like Florida conditions, <laughs> right? And it's another thing to have the hatch seal work perfectly every time when you're in a vacuum with heat and cold and different, you know, where you might be in the shadow of the earth or you might be in full sunlight and that can distort the shape of the metal uh, of the ring where it's sealing, right? And so you've got to be very careful how you how you do it because you don't want to be like, oh darn, it's where we, we closed the hatch during sunlight and it was bent out of shape slightly and now we can't get a good seal and 
so we can't get back to earth because <laughs> right so so um so i'm just saying you know it it's it's not as easy a thing as you might think to open the door and go out for a walk in space nasa has been planning for yonks to to develop a new spacesuit design and they never quite get enough money to do it and <laughs> and uh the spacesuits we're using now uh, on the International Space Station for spacewalks there on the US side, they were developed for the space shuttle back in the 1970s. The backpacks that are the key part of the spacesuit that we're all uh, you know, clever is, are the same backpacks that flew, I mean, they've been you know refurbished and all of that, but it's the same physical backpacks that have been used since 1981 on, uh, uh, on the space shuttle. So they're really old. What What are some of the most important features you think that we need for, you know, upgraded suits? Is it the weight? Is it the material to, to be more, you know, shielding? Uh, good question. I mean, I think, um, you know, comfort's important, right? Uh, uh, cooling. I mean, one of the problems we've had with the uh, shuttle suits recently uh, you remember when Luca Parmitano, Luca Parmitano nearly got drowned during his spacewalk. Uh, I see deep in sweat. No, no, it's not sweat. No, it's not sweat. Hey, Luca, can you clarify, is it increasing or not increasing? It's hard to tell, but it feels like a lot of water. Mission Control immediately aborted the spacewalk. Luca, we'll have you head back to the airlock. His crewmates inside yank off his helmet and grab towels to dry him off. So the cooling stuff leaked into his helmet and his helmet started to fill with water. You don't want that to happen, right? So I think safety, reliability is, is always number one. Jonathan says there are a couple things that limit the duration of a spacewalk like battery power. You know, it's probably okay that they only last eight hours because most of us are pretty tired after eight hours anyway. <laughs> right? You probably need a break. But it would be nice if they didn't have, you know, if, if they were less limited. And then just the thermal control, I think. Sometimes the astronauts do get cold or hot. Yeah. Right? Uh, so you need a more robust thing. And especially if you're going to use them on the moon, where the changes in temperature can be extreme, depending on whether it's daytime or nighttime. The other thing I'd like to see, I don't think this is part of the SpaceX design, is you know they the the US the the NASA astronauts have a thing called a safer, which is a little back extra backpack that goes on the bottom of their normal backpack that has rocket thrusters on. And so if their tether breaks and they start floating away, like you know, in gravity when George Clooney sort of oh goes into the distance, right? You know, they have a backpack that they can activate to rocket them back to, to safety. <laughs> And, you know, they've never had to use it in reality. They've done test flights of it, but they've never had to use it in a real emergency situation. Uh, but they have it every time, all right? And that's something that would be nice to have a fancier one of those that you could actually use just to whiz around more. And, and yeah. having said that, and yeah, these current spacesuits are really old and, and so on, they've done darn well. The capability to do space wars, to go outside the dragon is really important. It's going to be really important if they send it out to the moon and they have right. to do construction work on, on the lunar gateway or something like that. So I think it's cool that they're kind of getting, you know, the Polaris folks, right? Jared Isaacman and so yeah. on to sort of pay for this thing that they're going to need later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. And I don't know how much of the development cost Isaacman is footing for the spacesuit, but but, you know, it's like he needs it for his space warp, but they're really going to need it uh, out of the right. moon. As always, I appreciate the continued support of the channel. If you are new to Alien Space, please make sure to like this video and hit subscribe if you haven't already. I have a lot of exciting stuff planned and you don't want to miss any of it.